afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Manan Shah, and I'm founder at Unify Experts. And uh, I realize I'm the man standing in the way of your lunch, so I hope to make it worthy. So uh, today I'm going to speak about how you can use ERP Next for your e-commerce business and how ERP Next can help you unify all your operations across different e-commerce platforms and how ERP Next can be the single source of truth for your operations. So let me begin with some introduction uh, and our journey with Frappe and ERP Next. Uh, so our journey started with ERP Next and Frappe around uh, 2017. Uh, so in the year 2017, I joined my elder brother's organization uh, and we were into uh, like custom web and mobile application development. And what we realized is, you know, each and like every other customer needs either ERP or some form of the ERP. Uh, so we started looking up on the web, like what, what are our options? What are the kind of open source ERPs that are available that we can leverage? Uh, and because of the marketing blitz, we landed upon the not so open source ERP, which everyone does for the first time. Uh, and, and just apart from, you know, just the code base, it's not about the code base, even the knowledge base, we figured out that, you know, ERP Next had a very good community. Uh, like most of our questions were already answered on the discuss forum or the documentation. If there's any scenario based questions that we had, uh, that were really answered by community members on Discuss Forum. Uh, so that itself was very liberating. Uh, having the knowledge base available for any product is liberating for, you know, someone who's starting fresh. Uh, and so that, that's how we started. And then we never looked back. Uh, and around, uh, around the time of COVID, uh, we started like, you know, focusing more on ERP Next and, you know, related services. Uh, that's that's when you know uh, Unify Experts came into being. We figured out that okay, we can have one company focused mainly on ERP Next and related services. So that's how Unify Experts came into being, and we started helping businesses you know unify their operations across multiple uh, industries: trading, distribution, manufacturing, and also e-commerce. So we thought today is a good uh, chance or good opportunity to share our experience with e-commerce and ERP Next. So let's look at ERP, sorry, e-commerce as a market overall, right? Uh, so what happens is that, you know, uh, according to certain estimates, it is estimated that uh, about 41% of retail sales will be done on e-commerce by the year two, 2041. Uh, that's pretty much about half the global retail sales. And understandably, because, you know, uh, e-commerce gives you a wide reach, uh, which, you know, even if you set up a shop uh, at any place with good footfall or, you know, a busy place, uh, the kind of reach that, you know, e-commerce or any online presence gives you is just something that cannot be matched. Uh, then you have great user experience, right? Uh, people are innovating in the ways that people interact, uh, the kind of user experience. You have your influencer-led sales and all that kinds of thing. Uh, it's not pushy, you're free to choose whatever you want to buy at your own pace. If you figure out, okay, you want to buy it at maybe midnight or, you know, sometime, some odd time, you can do that, right? So that's, that's another reason. And technology, not just software technology, uh, but the kind of uh, reach that the mobile revolution or the, the mobile revolution has given India is also will, uh, is something that will play a pivotal role in this growth. And uh, we think that, you know, ERP Next can play a pivotal role in this growth story. And, and, and this is why we think that, you know, ERP Next and e-commerce are very synergistic. So what happens in e-commerce is you set up a store, right? Uh, you have two options. One is you can have your own store. Uh, you can set up a store on any SaaS platform like Shopify. You can self-host it using, you know, any open source uh, e-commerce tool like WooCommerce or have a web shop on ERP Next itself. Then you have these marketplaces where you can uh, uh, sell your products, right? Uh, the leaders are Amazon, in the US it's Walmart and 
There's a lot of sales on TikTok as well in the US and other regions. Um, and then, uh, then comes fulfillment. So you can fulfill these orders by having your own warehouses or you can outsource it to a third party logistics company who will store or, or stock these products on your behalf and ship them out, right? Um, and then uh, the other option is you can have these marketplaces themselves uh, fulfill these orders, right? So they have their own fulfillment centers. Amazon has a very good network of fulfillment centers across US, Canada, everywhere, right? So they, full, they, they stock your products and they fulfill it. So it's a kind of end-to-end -end solution that Amazon gives. Similarly with Walmart and TikTok as well. Uh, so if you think about it, uh, pretty much what, what you're doing is selling, right? And, and what better solution than ERPNX to sell and, and record data regarding selling, right? So it's pretty much selling module. Then you can send those sales orders to the fulfillment centers or the warehouses and they can fulfill it. Uh, the reason I have ShipStation mentioned here is because you know it's a widely used tool in the US uh, because it has a lot of readily available integrations with different carriers like UPS, USPS, DHL, etc. Right? Um, and then accounting. So you can create accrual entries as soon as you deliver these products. You can, you can keep a track of, okay, what are the accruals in terms of receivables, payables. You can record the payment as well uh, using the payments and you can integrate it with uh, different payment gateways as well. So it's a, it's a uh, natural synergy, right? ERPNX and e-commerce uh, feel very natural. It seems like it's a natural match. Right. So the usual flow that we have implemented for most of our e-commerce implementations is that we sync the orders from different market marketplaces through API integrations. Uh, so we would have orders coming in from Amazon, uh, Walmart and different other marketplaces and we just sync them as sales order on ERP next. Then we send these orders to ShipStation through an API integration. Um, so this lets the, the fulfillment team to uh, like know that, okay, what are the orders that we need to fulfill? And using this information, they pick the orders, they pack the orders and then generate a label. Um, as soon as a label is generated, we have a webhook configured on, on ShipStation, which makes an API call to ERP next, right? So a webhook is essentially a reverse API, uh, meaning that it will be triggered on event basis and not on polling basis. Uh, so as soon as a webhook is triggered, we get the information on ERP Next as to which product was shipped out in what quantity, through which carrier and through what tracking number. Using this, we create a delivery note in ERP Next and then through another API, we also notify the marketplace saying that, okay, we've shipped out this order, this is the carrier and this is the tracking number, right? Um, then there is accrual. So as soon as we create a delivery note, uh, Using simple hooks on ERP Next, we create a sales invoice on ERP Next. Uh, so what that does is it creates an accrual entry within ERP Next so that you can keep a track of, okay, how much money is owed to me or what is the receivable. Then there is settlement. So the way these uh, marketplaces work is that they settle on a bi-weekly basis, mostly the, at least that's what happens in the US. Uh, so they give you, they send you a statement saying that, okay, this is what we owe you for the orders that we shipped out. This is what you owe us for things like stocking, fulfillment and bunch of other fees and taxes. And therefore, this is the net amount that we will be paying. And this data is sent in, in at least we get it uh, as JSON files through API. And for about two weeks, this, the number of JSON files can run anywhere from 100 to 200 JSON files. So with the flexibility of ERP Next, we can write our own parsers in Python, parse all that data and create a settlement journal entry, uh, which cross references with the invoices of the exact uh, marketplace order ID, right? So everything is linked to each other uh, and everything looks cohesive. Uh, the data is, is, is really helpful. Then some of the other good practices that we have adopted is we've used, we've tried to use event-based architecture as and when possible. Uh, the advantage is, is that this is more real-time and it also reduces the load on ERPNX servers. 
So what would happen uh, in a traditional setup is you poll the uh, marketplace's API, asking them whether a particular order was shipped or not, right? Instead of that, we subscribe to a webhook on that marketplace, and that marketplace will send us a payload uh, whenever that event happens, right? And Amazon being Amazon, um, it has a very particular way of doing certain things. So uh, what we have to do is subscribe to a webhook through API. It will send all that data to an SQS, which is like a queue, uh, queue service by AWS. And that queue data is all consumed by Lambda function, which is a serverless function. And it sends all that information to ERPnext, and then it, it creates a delivery note in ERPnext. Uh, then, then we have scalability, right? Anyone who has worked with uh, uh, ERPnext at scale can probably uh, relate with this meme, right? So uh, figuring out what, where is the deadlock coming from, where is the lock weight coming out from, is, is really a pain, pain uh, and you know, it's a difficult thing to find out and fix. Uh, so we, what we realized is that you know, we had orders coming in from multiple marketplaces, uh, and, and what that meant is uh, multiple marketplaces are trying to create the order at the same time, right? So th that's where our bottleneck was. And with the flexibility that ERPnext has, the way we chose to solve it is we tried to make the process synchronous rather than asynchronous uh, 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 happening on multiple queues. So we redirected all the orders to one single queue. We can create a custom queue called SOQ and then we redirected all the order processing onto a single queue. Then there was better visibility, right? Uh, with amazing features in the ERPnext accounting, like accounting dimension, uh, we configured the marketplaces as an accounting dimension and different regions. So the way it works is that uh, usually a seller would like to take the advantage of selling on multiple regions uh, use it on the same marketplace. So meaning that I can sell on Amazon US, Amazon Mexico, and Amazon Canada. It's only a matter of you know clicking a few buttons and anyways the order is being fulfilled by the fulfillment centers of Amazon. So I don't have any scalability issues there. Uh, so configuring all of those as accounting dimensions, my analysis became very easy. I could just select those filters on the profit and loss statement and I have my profit and loss statement for my set of filters. Then there were certain fees that Amazon used to charge. So if you notice that that little red box, it says polybagging fee. So that is something that our customer realized that you know this is something that we never realized. Uh, this is completely unknown to us. We never knew Amazon charges something like a polybagging fee. Uh, so if you remember, I talked about the JSON data. So what we did is we already have a table for the journal entry. We just grouped them by the accounts and gave them a summary in the using the HTML field. And uh, they knew they, they could quickly identify what kind of charges are they actually being charged. They raised tickets with Amazon and tried to liaison with them and uh, see if they could get some refunds on those. Then uh, lastly, we could do things at scale, right? We could sync orders from multiple marketplaces uh, onto ERPnext. We could sync inventory to different marketplaces. So uh, for the seller fulfilled orders, meaning the orders that the seller themselves fulfill, they need to tell Amazon and Walmart and other marketplaces what is their inventory position like, right? So that they don't end up overselling. Uh, so we could do that easily with API integration and uh, ERPnext already does, you know, some already calculate something known as a projected quantity, right? So it takes into account every uh, possibility like what are the orders, what are the outgoings, incomings and everything. Uh, using that we just uh, notify the marketplaces and it's done. We could sync inventory from different marketplaces. We knew what exactly stock does Amazon stock in their multiple fulfillment centers. We know what kind of orders are being fulfilled, what did we send. So if there is any discrepancy, you know, uh, we could re actually raise issues with them and try to figure out what's going on. Have they actually lost certain inventory or not? Then we have finances. So we could sync finances from multiple marketplaces as well using just API integration and Frappe framework. Uh, so what the, the main advantage was, you know, we had a single source of truth using ERPnext from different marketplaces, different regions. Just imagine logging onto Amazon's portal, then Walmart's portal, 
and maybe TikTok portal, and that too with different marketplaces for each, sorry, different regions for each marketplace. So the visibility and the single source of truth is what we, we achieved and it really unified all the operations for them. All right, uh, thank you. So that's, that's all from my side. If you have any questions, uh, you can get hold of me after the talk. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I think we can just, you have a question? Yeah, sure. So, so right now, this is a customer uh, driven project. So we developed it for US, uh, but I guess for India as well, I think we would need Flipkart. That's one of the major missing parts. But yeah, apart from that, we, it can be done for the Indian market as well. Ready for production in the US market, not in the Indian market. We'll have to test a few things out. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I think that's it. Thank you.